I'm Sophie and you're watching the Science Bit. This week we're starting a five part summer science project series where each week I'll be taking you through one of five science projects that you can do at home. Today we're looking at lava. You've seen lava labs before right? Isn't it so cool how the bubbles like go up and down but at the same time? So how does this work? To make your own lava lamp First, fill a glass, most of the way up, with sunflower oil. Fill the rest of the glass with water. The water is more dense than the oil, so it should sink to the bottom. Add a few drops of food colouring. And since this is water-based, it will also sink to the bottom of the glass. Now you'll need a vitamin C tablet. Break it into a few pieces and put them in one at a time and you should see your lava lamp start to work. You can see the bubbles rising to the top, but what's actually happening? There's two main principles at work here, density and polarity. Density is basically how much stuff you can fit into a certain amount of space. Density is also affected by temperature, so the hotter your liquid is, the less dense it will be. Polarity prevents the oil and water from mixing together. Water molecules are polar because the end of the molecule with two hydrogen atoms is positively charged. The other end with the oxygen is negatively charged. Just like in a magnet, north poles are attracted to south poles and the positive end of the water molecule will connect to the negative end of other molecules. Oil molecules, however, are non-polar, so they don't have a positive or negative charge, and they're not attracted to the water molecules at all. That's why the oil and the water doesn't mix. This is similar to how real lava lamps work. In a real one, however, the densities of the liquids are much closer together than sunflower oil and water. Instead of using a heater or a light in our homemade lava lamp, we use the vitamin C tablets. The tablets react with the water to produce carbon dioxide gas bubbles, and these stick to the water droplets. The water and gas together are less dense than the oil, so they rise to the top of the glass. In real lava lamps, they could use wax instead of the water and a watery substance instead of the oil in our homemade one. There's a heater and a light at the bottom of the lava lamp. So when this heats up the wax, it gives the particles more energy, causing them to move away from each other and so making the wax expand. This in turn decreases the density of the wax, allowing it to rise through the liquid as the wax loses energy when it moves towards the top of the lava lamp, the density increases again. So since the density of the wax is now more than the liquid again, the wax will move back towards the bottom of the lava lamp where it can be heated and then the cycle will keep repeating and you get the bubbles going up and down again. Lava lamps powered by heat are trickier to make but I tried this by pouring boiling water into a dish and setting the lava lamp inside it. I was hoping that this would cause a similar reaction, but it's not as effective as a real lava lamp. And the reason why lava lamps don't actually use real lava is because it would require an enormous amount of heat energy as molten lava is usually found at temperatures around 1000 degrees C, which you can imagine is a bit too hot to have in your house. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for next time where we'll be going to project number two. Yes.